But what actually is the Spitfire card? 14 megahertz. Right, let's get this machine apart. Hello and welcome to a hardware related video, something slightly different this time. You know, a couple of months ago, Glenn from the channel CRG sent me this package. And in here he tells me there's something which will enhance and improve the performance of my Amiga A500, Big Red. Now, regular viewers to the channel will know I've done a couple of videos featuring Big Red, making some improvements and some enhancements to what was originally a stock standard Amiga A500. I've done the case and the keycaps, and there'll be a link to a video to that up above here somewhere. So this will be the first video featuring actual internal performance enhancements, and I'm really looking forward to this. So without further ado, let's get this package open and see what's inside. A Spitfire? How's this going to help, Glenn? How will I even fit this? Huh? Well, of course, not a Spitfire, but a Spitfire card. This is a Spitfire Accelerator card for the Amiga A500, and Glenn has done a video on this some time ago, and it can be seen on his channel. I'll put a link up here to that. But what actually is the Spitfire card? The Spitfire 500 is a budget-friendly Amiga 500 accelerator. The Spitfire 500 build centers on a 14 MHz 68000 processor, 4 to 8 MB of fast RAM, and an onboard IDE port. It is not sold as a pre-assembled board, so the process involves ordering components, programming CPLDs, and careful soldering. So this will give accelerator abilities to the A500 and also I'm led to believe add an IDE interface as well. So we can get a hard drive fitted in the A500 as well. And that's pretty exciting. And I really can't wait to get this fitted and up and running. So without further ado, and you know how this works, let's grab a cup of tea and crack this bad boy open and get this thing fitted. So in order to get this build underway, we're going to need the following components. The Spitfire card. No, no, we've already done this joke. The actual Spitfire card. A compact flash card. Mine has got Workbench 3.1 installed and I used FSUAE on my Mac in order to get all of this set up. Oh, hello, future Yawning Angel here. I just wanted to say, if you're looking to install Workbench on your compact flash card using FSUAE, be that under Windows or Mac OS, uh, there's a chap called Mikey G who's done a wonderful video on YouTube that explains the whole process. Now in his video he uses Windows, but obviously I use FSUAE under Mac OS. The process is exactly the same. Video was really helpful, got me through the install process, so I got Workbench set up on my compact flash card, okay. Really great stuff. I'll pop a link up, up here and there'll be a link in the video description down below. But do go and check it out, it's really useful. And with that said, back to the video an IDE to compact flash adapter and for this build I've gone with a replacement Workbench 3.1 kickstart ROM. This will replace the existing 1.3 ROM already in the machine. Next up we'll get the machine apart and get the kickstart 3.1 ROM installed just to make sure that works and then we'll bring all the components together and get the accelerator card fitted properly and up and running. Right let's get this machine apart. So here's the existing ROM which I'm going to take out and replace with the new Kickstart 3.1 ROM. So hopefully jump cut to the new ROM being fitted. And there it is fitted. That was quite an easy process. The next step, put the machine together loosely and then power it up and see if this ROM actually works. 
Here we are then firing the machine up, and yes, it does. Kickstart 3.1 ROM is working. So the next job is to remove the CPU and fit that to the Spitfire card. The Spitfire card will then fit in to the CPU socket. Easy. And it's out. So I've managed to fit the CPU to the Spitfire card OK. That was quite an easy process. There's a marker on the Spitfire card which shows you the orientation of the CPU, which way it is meant to go in. And that helped me immensely. So the next thing then is to fit the Spitfire card into the CPU socket and uh, power it up and see if this works. The Spitfire card is now fitted into the CPU socket. It was a really snug fit, but I was gentle and managed to get in there okay. So it's fitted in there nice and tightly and I'm quite happy with the fitment. So next up, I'm going to fit the compact flash card to the CF to IDE adapter, fit that to the Spitfire card, and then we'll close the machine up loosely, connect it up to a monitor, power it up and see what happens. So I only managed to get screen capture footage of this momentous event, but I powered the machine up, the monitor seemed to flick to life, we had floppy drive access, and then all of a sudden the machine booted up, it booted from that compact flash hard drive. I was absolutely over the moon. So happy that I'd actually managed to get this card fitted with no problems at all. Right, so uh, the machine is not back together as the eagle-eyed amongst you can see, but I've fitted an external uh, GoTech drive and we're just going to load some software off of that to make sure everything's happy and working. So the machine is going to power up now and this is using the PowerShark again to power this. So there we go, we've got video, there we go. It's booted up beautifully. Right, now what I need to do is just put the USB drive in and find some software. Right, I've got sysinfo here. So let's give this a run and see what happens. Right, um, let's check speed, computing speed. So there we go. Look at that, dry stones, 14.32. Um, so I'm coming in at, comment, excellent, 14 megahertz. This is running at 14 megahertz. <laughs> That's brilliant. So yeah, faster than a stock A600. Um, a little bit faster than a 1200. Might be a bit of a bold claim, but uh, there you go. Uh, let's just have a quick look at memory. Yeah, I need to change some of the jumpers on there because we're showing 4 meg at the moment. So I just need to fiddle with the jumpers on that card, which I'll do next. But um, that's... Uh, yeah. It's working. It's, it's running at 14 megahertz. I've got an A500 now running at 14 megahertz. That's brilliant. I'm so happy with that. Fantastic stuff. Brilliant. So this was showing four meg of RAM. It needs to show eight. And there's a jumper just in here, JP2. Probably not sure if the camera can pick that up. Um, but JP2, I just need to remove that cover and that should give us the eight meg. Because over here on the actual card itself, it does say JP2, four slash eight meg. We know we're getting four meg at the moment. Just need to take that off. Should give us the eight meg that the card can deliver. So we'll get that done and then do one last test. Time now for some shaky handheld camera footage just to show that the cap on the JP2 jumper has been removed. So with it on, we've got four meg of RAM. With it off, we've now got eight meg of RAM. And if we look at the text here, if you can read that, it says JP2 four slash eight megabyte. So now with that taken off, this card is now delivering eight meg of RAM. Awesome. So we can see here, firing the machine up, Workbench is showing 8 meg of RAM. Actually, it's showing a bit more. 
The eagle eyed amongst you may have noticed that I've actually got more than eight meg of memory showing on this machine. The Spitfire card has given me eight meg, but I've also got an internal half meg RAM expansion fitted to Big Red as well. Hence, I've got more than eight meg of RAM. So hopefully that clears that up. So with everything installed and working, I can now screw the machine back together because our work here is done. And there you have it. As you can see behind me, Big Red is up and running. It's booted brilliantly, Workbench 3.1, all booted off that um, compact flash card. It's just running really well, as, as you would expect. No problems there at all. Also, just to test things out, I've installed some software from Original Floppy. So my copy of Eye of the Beholder from Original Floppy Disk that has installed onto the hard drive as well. That went really easily. And also I decided to install my copy of Populous 2. Once again, that installed with no problems and runs perfectly. So in terms of a functioning A500 that I can use, no problems at all, it just works. I'd just like to take some time to say a massive thank you to Glenn from the channel CRG, Casual Retro Gamer, for going to the lengths that he did to get these Spitfire cards assembled, tested and shipped out to people. Glenn, thank you ever so much. I really, really appreciate your efforts on this. It's totally transformed Big Red and I can't wait to see what else I can do with this machine now. If you've not already done so, do go and check out Glenn's channel. There'll be a link in the description down below. And if you haven't already done so either, please sub to his channel. Glenn makes some amazing hardware videos. And as a software guy, I find his hardware videos really interesting. So go and check him out. Make sure you do it. So going forward, there's a couple of jobs still outstanding on Big Red and a couple of things I need to address. First of all, I need to get the return key sorted out on here. Yes, the return key's still not working since I did the keycap replacement, which is a bit frustrating. Thankfully, the enter key does work, so I've been able to use the machine uh, without any problems so far, but I do need that return key up and running. Uh, also, this external GoTek drive, I've got some plans for this, some cosmetic changes coming up to this in a future video, so make sure you subscribe as to not miss out on that one. Also, I've noticed I've got a bit of a challenge when it comes to transferring larger files onto the A500. Now, obviously on an A600 and an A1200, which historically have uh, internal hard drives, there's the external PCMCIA slot where we can put an external compact flash card in and transfer files that way from another machine. Obviously, the A500 doesn't have that. So all I've got is the internal floppy drive and of course the external GoTek drive in terms of enabling me to transfer files. So I'm not sure how I can get larger files across onto this machine. So if anyone's got any ideas or thoughts or solutions, drop them in the comments down below. Thanks. And that sums it up for this video. Thank you ever so much for watching if you've made it this far. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate that. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my channel as it will help my channel grow. Uh, lots more videos like this coming up. I'll be back on the Amos trail again at some point. We need to get Amos installed on this compact flash card in this machine now. That's going to be exciting. Um, lots of Amos projects coming up and also a fair few hardware projects too. Might get back to the BBC Master as well because I got some goodies over Christmas for that machine. Can't wait to play with them. Right, um, so until the next video, whatever you do, look after yourselves and keep it retro. If you enjoyed this video, here's some others which you may find interesting.